All right, so we're going to go over um, section J5 in our unit zero, which is all of our review sections. And J5 is all about operations on real numbers, which is something that most often we're probably just going to do in our calculator. Um, but it is good to review just so that we are able to do some things quickly off the top of our head. So when we look at adding and subtracting numbers, we want to make sure that if the signs are the same, that we just add them together and keep that same sign. If the signs are different, then we subtract them and we keep the sign of a larger number, okay? Meaning the larger um, value, not in terms of the sign, okay? So let's go ahead and look at some examples. Here, if I have nine and 29, notice the nine is positive, the 29 is negative. Signs are different, so I subtract, which gives me 20. And then notice the bigger number here is 29. 29 is bigger than nine, so it's gonna stay negative, okay? Same idea on the next one, negative 9 and negative 29, both are negative, so we're going to go ahead and combine them and keep it negative. So this gives me negative 38. And then on the next one, I have 15 minus a negative 6. And recall that anytime we have double negatives, they combine to become positive. So this becomes 15 plus 6, right, which then we can combine to get a positive 21. Same thing here, negative 15 plus 6, signs are different, so we combine and keep the larger sign, which in this case is going to be negative. And when we subtract 15 from 6, we get 9. I don't know why I just wrote an 8. Just keeping you guys on your toes, just keeping you guys on your toes. <laughs> so negative 9, right? All right. And then the same thing is true when we're doing fractions. Now with fractions, when we add and subtract, we have to make sure they have a common denominator, which is the bottom value um, in the fraction, right? Here we have two negative numbers, so we're gonna combine them and keep that number negative. But before we can combine them, we need to make sure both fractions are written with a common value. So when we're looking for a common denominator, excuse me, um, we're looking for the smallest number that both of these denominators will um, go into. So 5 and 3, the smallest number that 5 and 3 both divide into evenly would be 15. So I want to write both of these fractions with a denominator of 15. And in order to do that, I need to build up my denominator. Right now, this is just a 5. To make it into a 15, I would have to multiply by 3 right? But if I multiply the bottom by 3, I must also multiply the top by 3. So the new numerator for this first fraction is going to be 6. So I get negative 6 fifteenths. And then I do the same thing with the second fraction. Build up the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by, th uh, not 3. My goodness, you guys, first section. What I need to multiply 3 by in order to get 15 is 5. So I'm going to multiply by 5 on the bottom. I'm also going to multiply by 5 on the top. Because whatever we do to the bottom, we're going to do to the top, right? So that makes the new numerator here 5. And now that they have the same denominator, we can go ahead and just combine the tops. So negative 6 and negative 5, both negative. Combine, it stays negative. So that gives me negative 11 over 15, okay? All right. We do want to reduce our fractions when possible. This one doesn't have any common factors, so we're just going to leave it like that. Okay. On the other side of this page, you can see practice. Anytime you see practice, these are problems that I'm going to have you work um, so that you get a little practice with these same concepts. Okay. So I want you all to go ahead and pause the video and try to work through these four. Then when you're ready, go ahead and play the video again, and that way you can check yourself. All right. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go over these. On the first one, double negatives become positive, so this becomes four plus one, which is five. Second one, we have opposite signs, so we subtract and keep the larger sign, which is negative, so this becomes negative 15. The third example, we have two negatives, so we combine and it stays negative, so negative 22. And then on the last one, again, we need a common denominator, which in this case is 10. To build up a denominator of 5, we have to multiply by 2 on top and bottom, which makes our new numerator here a 2. Um, when we build up our denominator on the second term to get to a 10, we have to multiply by 5 on top and bottom, which makes our new numerator here 5. So negative 2 plus 5 leaves me with 3 tenths, and it does not reduce. So we just leave it like that. 
Okay, so that's adding and subtracting with sign numbers. Now we want to look at um, multiplying and dividing with sign numbers. So a little bit different, right? When we multiply and divide, we don't need common denominators with fractions. Um, we also don't necessarily subtract and keep the larger and things like that. The rules change when we have the same signs, it becomes a positive. So that means if we do a positive times a positive, it comes out positive, right? Or if we do a negative times a negative, it comes out positive. So if the signs are the same, we end the, the ending result is positive. If the signs are different, then we get a negative answer. So this would be like if we multiply a positive times a negative, the negative wins, right? Or if we do a negative times a positive, right? Again, the negative wins. So keeping these rules in mind, we want to look at a few examples. So regular numbers are easy, right? 9 times negative 6 is going to give me a negative 54 because the signs are different. Negative 32 divided by negative 4. You can do this on your calculator, or some people even like to write it as a division, negative 32 over negative 4. Negative over a negative or negative divided by a negative becomes positive. And in this case, it's an even 8. Okay. And we want to do the same thing with our fractions, right? So with our fractions, if we have one-third times five-ninths, with fractions, we have a negative times a negative, so I know it's going to end up positive. When I multiply or divide, I don't need a common denominator, right? I just multiply straight across. So this is going to give me five over three times nine, right? I don't have anything that I can reduce or um, simplify here. So we're just going to go ahead and leave it as 5 over 27 since we can't reduce it, okay? Division is a little bit different. With division, remember when we're dividing fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. Okay, I learned that it was a space gun. And in order to fire the space gun, you have to squeeze the two little dots together to fire this gun. And when you squeeze the two little dots together, it goes shoom, shoom, and it flips it, right? And so when you squeeze the two little dots together, it becomes a multiplication and it flips your second fraction. <laughs> so if that helps, great. If not, just remember that you multiply by the reciprocal of the second. And then from here, we have a positive times a negative, so we know it's going to end up negative 9 over, again, multiply straight across, 3 times 15. And then here we can actually reduce, right? You could go ahead and multiply this out and then reduce, but since I see that I have a 3 on bottom and a 9 on top, I'm going to go ahead and reduce that now because I know 3 goes into 3 one time, 3 goes into 9 three times. So what I'm left with is negative 3 fifths. Okay, maybe not too bad. Okay, again, I want y'all to practice this. So at the top of page three, there are four for y'all to try. So again, go ahead and pause the video and um, give your best attempt on these four. And then when you're ready to be checked or if you get stuck, unpause the video and um, I'll go over them, okay? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go over them. The first one, negative 45 divided by 9. Some people like to write it this way. You don't have to. But negative 45 divided by 9 is going to leave us with a negative 5, right? Signs are different, so the negative wins. We multiply two negatives, right? We get positive 72. And then when we work out our um, fraction problems, when we're multiplying, we just multiply straight across. Now, when I start to multiply this, I notice right away I have a 12 on bottom and a 6, or sorry, a 12 on top and a 6 on bottom, and I know that those can reduce. So instead of actually multiplying out what 6 times 13 is, I'm just going to write it as 6 times 13 so that I can go ahead and reduce on top and bottom here. I know that 6 goes into 6 one time, and I know that 6 goes into 12 two times. So I'm left with a negative 2 thirteenths. Okay. Now again, if you went ahead and multiplied this out and got 78, then you would be able to reduce negative 12 over 78 down to negative 2 thirteenths. Um, reducing here just kind of saves you a step. Okay. Same thing with um, our division, right? We shoot our space gun, pshum, pshum. <laughs> it becomes a multiplication and it flips the second equation. So once we have that done, now we can multiply straight across. A negative times a negative gives us a positive. On top we get positive 8. 
On bottom, we have 2 times 5. Again, I left it as 2 times 5, so I can reduce the 2 and the 8. 2 goes into 2 one time. 2 goes into 8 four times. So this gives me 4 fifths. Okay, so far so good. So if you notice here, when we're multiplying and dividing, it's really the number of negative signs that we have determines what the sign is going to be. Because when we do one negative sign or an odd number, right, it ends up negative. When we have two negative signs or an even number, it ends up positive. So that's just a good little rule of thumb here is anytime there's an even amount of negative signs, we end up with a positive revo result, okay? And when we have an odd number of negative signs, then our result is going to be negative. So why does that help us? Because when we're gonna work something like this where we're multiplying um, several numbers together, okay? Normally we would do this one step at a time, right? We would say negative five times negative one is a positive five. And then we'd still have to do these other three multiplications. And we'd say, okay, that positive five times two is 10. And then we'd still have this negative three. And then we do 10 times negative three, right? Gives us negative 30. So instead of having to do this one little step at a time, what we could do instead is go ahead and just count the number of negative signs. So one, two, three. If I have three negatives, that means it's going to come out negative, right? Because that's an odd number of negative signs. So I know my answer is going to be negative, and then I can just ignore the signs and multiply the numbers. So five times one is five, times two is 10, times three is 30, and it's really easy to see this is going to end up as negative 30 versus having to do it one little step at a time. Now, if you can't remember this little helpful hint, then just do it one step at a time and you'll still get the same answer, okay? Let's look at another one. Same idea here. I'm going to count the number of negatives. So one, two, three, four means I'm going to end up with a positive answer, right? And then I can just ignore the signs now that I know it's going to be a positive answer and just figure out what the number is, right? 25 times one is 25 times one again is 25, times three is 75, times two is 150. So that means we end up with a positive 150. Now again, if that is something that is like too much for you or you're worried you're not gonna remember, you can go ahead and work this one step at a time. Negative 25 times negative one gives us a positive 25, and then we just write in all the other multiplications and we just work it out one step at a time. So 25 times negative 1 is a negative 25, right? Negative 25 times negative 3 gives us a positive 75. And then a positive 75 times 2 gives us 150. So either way, we're getting the same answer, okay? All right, so that is the end of section um, J5, which is operations with real numbers. So that is now due. If you have any questions, please let me know.